I'm going to start calling you out individually. Uh, and if you continue to not follow the rules, we'll see what the institution can do to support you. So, now we're going to do a round of what's the news. If you have anything to share out, things that have happened, are happening, or will happen, please share those out. You can raise a hand and we'll call on you. Corbin, what do you got? YTOP is happening tomorrow and the next day. YTOP is happening tomorrow and the next day. Uh, and uh, these things are getting uh, more and more important the older you get, the further along in the educational system you go, uh, the more you're going to want your assessment to be representative of what you can do. Because folks are going to start using that data to help you be in groups of folks that are like you so you can access the education you need. Other stuff out there in the news that you want to share out? What do you got, Bones? Um, my significant other's birthday's coming up soon. Sigo's birthday birthday's coming up. Lyric, what do you got? Um, next month is the NFL draft. Next month is the NFL draft. Uh, Justice, take your hood off. Other folks out there with news. What do you got, Braden? It needs to stop snowing. Uh, it is snowing. I said Remember, no judge. I'm correcting you, yeah? No judgment. It is snowing. Other folks out there with news. Michael, what do you got? Snow is cold. Snow is cold. True. Uh, Brody and Mary, I need you to move your backpacks to the front. Same with you, Sydney. Remember, we don't leave them on our chairs. What do you got over here? Uh, Barrett. It's Monday. It is Monday. Dominic. My parents just got back from Ikea. Parents just got back from Ikea. Barrett. Tomorrow is Tuesday. Tomorrow is Tuesday. True. Michael. The day after tomorrow is Wednesday. The day after tomorrow is Wednesday. Uh, I got two things. The New York Mets, the baseball team I like, are in first place right now. Second thing, this weekend my daughter did the swing in Sinks Canyon, the Killer Cave swing for the first time, and she was super excited about it. Corbin, what do you got? Today is Monday. Today is Monday. No, Brody. Today after Wednesday is Thursday. Yeah, really cutting edge news cutting edge news reporters here. Tatum. Um one of the Chicago Cubs um, players got arrested for having twenty four pounds of pass. Oh yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Why? Uh, what do you got over here, Dominic? There's a track meet Thursday. Track meet Thursday, Justice. I ran a 400 meter for the first time last Saturday. Cool. Sydney. That is not Sydney over there. Did I call her Sydney? My bad. I'm sorry. Uh, Michael? Yesterday was Sunday. Yesterday was Sunday. Michael with the news. Later. On Saturday, I went in the... Okay. Uh, other news for me. Uh, we got to go to a farm this weekend and see piglets. What do you got? Uh, the weekend is this weekend. True. Hey folks, uh, the purpose of this conversation is to A, have a low consequence setting for us to practice sharing out as a whole group. So you need to be listening to your peers as they speak. B, to practice sharing things that are meaningful for us. So sharing out that tomorrow is going to be Tuesday may be funny once when you do it like five, six, eight times, sort of undermines the purpose of this conversation, which is gonna make it so we don't do this as much. So let's take it seriously and treat it right. What do you got, Naya? My brother comes back from Denver and tonight. Nice. Uh, what do you got, Justice? Okay, this is kind of a long one, but I'm gonna make it short. So, my sister is having this thing for student council at the high school, and basically how much money they can raise in each classroom in a bucket. That means they have to kiss a pig and they're going to use my pig because I'm the only one in Lander that pretty much has a pig. So. Wow, nice. Okay, last four and we're moving on. Avery. My puppy gets his leg cast off next week. Dominic. My sister just moved into Arizona. Noah. My brother is going to Idaho to check out a campus over there and work and go work out with his team. Awesome. Last one, Michael, what do you got? You flipped over four times? I almost did. Almost. Cool. Uh, well, glad you did. All right, team. I'm going to be doing some teaching from the front on this side. Uh, I'm going to turn my voice up so you can hear me. Let's do me a favor and make sure that you are engaged with me. Uh, let's see. Taya, can you hear me? Cool. 
If you can't hear me at any moment, tell me to turn the volume up. All right? So, uh, what gets measured can get managed. Can anyone tell me what it means to measure something? Uh, what do you got, Justice? Okay. What does it mean to measure something? Anybody? What do you got, Corbin? Find the distance between one point to another. To find the distance between one point to another. So, for instance, Mr. Nichols, uh, the distance from his feet to the top of his bald spot is five foot six inches. Can anyone tell me something else about measuring? Hayden, what do you got? Sorry, Aiden, I couldn't hear you. The exact weight? Length. Length. So we have different units of measurements. We have time, we have weight, we have length, we have uh, distance, we have all these different units. Um, when you know how much of something you're getting and how much of something you get over time, so when you measure it at different points in time, you can start to identify patterns, and when you can identify patterns, you can start to change some variables so that you are managing that measurement to be more like whatever it is you want it to be like. So for instance, uh, if you notice that you feel tired all the time, you can start documenting how much sleep you get and maybe the quality of your sleep, and over time, just through measuring it, you're likely gonna make some changes that will make it better. So, right now I want to figure out how we are going to measure and manage our reading. Can you all share out a way that you might be able to measure your reading? Corbin, what do you got? Time you're reading. Time. Thanks for that, Corbin. Time. Other folks, uh, Paxson. Pages. Pages. Uh, other folks. Other ideas? You got time, pages, Michael. Pages compared to time. Pages, well, I'll go P over T. Cool, what do you got? Chapters. What's that? Chapters. Chapters, I think that's the one that most folks do. Other folks? Words. Words. Sentences, other ideas? What do you got? Times per chapter. Time per chapter, so I'll go, uh, T, I'm, I'm going to go C over T, chapters per time. Uh, anybody else? Uh, one that I like, I'm going to abbreviate is PD, uh, which is perceived difficulty. So if I think something is hard, easy, or somewhere in between, I could be measuring that. Did, was reading today hard because I was distracted the whole time? Was reading today easy because I really wanted to see if the character caught fire when the dragon breathed on them? And that's exciting. Sweet. So here's what we're going to do right now. With your partner, you are going to discuss what strategy you are going to use to measure your reading going forward. It doesn't matter to me how you measure it. What matters to me is that you are going to measure it. And right now you're going to discuss a way that you want to do that. Are there any questions about what we're about to do? Or what questions are there? Cool. Madeline, can you tell me what we're about to do? Cool. That tells me that maybe I need to say it again. So I'm going to try. Lyric, can you still hear me? Lyric, can you hear me? Okay, sweet. I need everybody to listen to me because I'm going to get the expectations out there. And if you can't hear me, I need you to tell me. Justice, what's up? Can you raise your voice like a lot higher? A lot higher. Cool. I'm going to do that and I'm going to actually move to the middle of the room because that increases the likelihood that folks will hear me. So, here's what's going to happen. Going forward in this class, you are going to measure your reading in some way. It does not matter to me how you do that. What matters to me is that you do that. In about a week, Mr. Green and I are going to conference with you about your reading. When we do, we're going to say, hey Ryder, how are you measuring your reading? 
and Ryder's going to say, I've been keeping track of how many chapters I read a week. See, look at my log. And we're going to say, that is awesome, Ryder. Strong work. Right now, you are going to discuss with your partner how you are going to measure your reading. So you're going to use one of those things that we wrote down or something else. You're going to talk about how you're going to measure it. And then we're going to come back together as a group. What questions are out there about what we're about to do? All right, go. <laughs> track of the number of pages I read. Hey, I'm going to keep track of the number of chapters I read, or I'm going to keep track of whether it's hard, easy, or somewhere in between for me each time I sit down to read. One thing that I really believe as a teacher is that if you read for two hours a week, you're going to hit what's called an adaptation threshold. You're going to tax your system enough that your brain will adapt to that practice. So I ask that you have that as a goal for yourself. And however you're measuring, you're making sure that you're hitting that. We read roughly for about 15 to 20 minutes in here every single day. So someone else who's better at doing math than me right now can figure out whatever that is. But you need to read more than that outside of class. So. I see the gears going. Cool. Uh, quick pause. Quick pause. Stop talking, y'all. We humans do a lot of studying around what can help a person learn or stay healthy. For instance, everybody here who goes to the dentist has probably been told you should floss more. Uh, or you should brush two hours a day. Or, that would be a wonderful <laughs> idea. Two times a day. Uh, right. Because if you were to brush for two hours a day, you'd scrape all the enamel off your teeth and you'd lose your teeth. That's why we don't do that. If you brush two times a day... Thanks, Mr. Green. If you brush two times a day, that's just enough to keep you, keep you with healthy dental hygiene. If you read for two hours a week, that's enough to make it so you're gonna adapt to the challenge that is reading. Questions about that right now? All right. Um, then we're gonna move to work with some of the worksheets that you have right now. And this is gonna transition us towards lunch. You should have two worksheets on your desk. One of them looks like this, has some boxes on it. We're gonna focus on that one first. If you don't have it, can you raise a hand and we'll get it to you quickly? Thanks, Sydney. No, I want my hand. 
All right. So bring your attention back to me if you would. We're a little squirrely right now, and I would appreciate your attention. So I'm going to start calling you out by name if you're talking while I'm talking. So, so far this year, we've already gone over first person, second person, and third person. This sheet with the boxes on it is largely going to be a review for us. If you need it to help you out, please refer to it. Can I throw something in there? A little necklace? That first story we read last week on Hoops, right? He didn't go to the basketball court with dad and me. What point of view was that written in? Second. It was second. It was second, because the reader was addressing you, saying you are going to do this, you are going to do that. Is that. Do you see very many second person point of view short stories? No. Yes. No. That's a very rare one, but that was second person. Thank you for picking that out. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Thanks, Thanks a lot yeah. for that. The one addition that's on here is a point of view or a type of narration called hybrid. This is when it might shift between points of view in the story. So for instance, you might have one chapter where the narrator uh, is using the third person saying, he went to the park and he ate a donut. Then it might shift to another chapter that uses all second person. While you were in the park eating the donut, you saw a bald eagle. Then it might shift again to something else. There are different reasons why an author might do something like that, um, but it's just important for now that you know that we call that a hybrid point of view. Up next is where we're gonna go a little bit deeper with point of view than we've been so far. So, we can think about point of view as being full, partial, or unreliable. Can anyone raise a hand and take a guess as to what it means to have an unreliable narrator? Raise hands. Corbin, what do you got? They're not going to tell you all the details. They're not going to tell you all the details? Anybody have a different guess? What does it mean to have an unreliable narrator? What do you got? What's that? False information. False information? You have something else, Justice? Yeah, like they're not getting their, um, they're not, wherever they're getting their information, they're probably not showing where they got it, or it, it, it seems like it's pretty made up, or it's not proven by facts. Like, cool. I like that too. Like hearsay, right? Huh? Like hearsay, right? So, to have an unreliable narrator means that maybe they're giving you misinformation, maybe they don't uh, have the correct information, so they're trying to give you right information, but they don't have everything they need. Um, or it means that maybe they are not super intelligent, or maybe there's something uh, going on with their brain that is... Uh, making it so they can't be trusted. For instance, if you had a story told from the perspective of a three-year-old, would they be a reliable narrator and unreliable narrator? Reliable. Depends on the three-year-old, right? <laughs> cool. Can anyone take a guess as to what it means to have a partial narrator? A partial point of view. What do you got, Braden? <laughs> Kind of changes. I shouldn't be talking right now. The cat narrator is only telling the story from one person's point of view. Let's take a look at the art of it. Put that up, and we're ready now with another one. person's point of view. I do. So, that would be partial, wouldn't it? I'll share the glass and say, thanks. Mr. Green, did you get that one up? Yeah, I think so. I think what it's called, it's when it comes to third person narration, you know, it's under sheet there. If your narrator knows everybody, what everybody's doing, thinking, does anybody know what the name of that is? It's a full narrator, but it's called. 
It's actually called omniscient, which means all all knowing. Very good. Okay, if you have a third person narrator from one person's point of view, that's called a limited third person, which is just like what? Full. Partial. Very good. No, not full. It's just one person, right? Yeah. Okay, there you go. All right. Cool. Folks, that's all we're going to have for this half of class for you. You're welcome to pack up and have a nice day. Thanks so much.